Living in a city is hard work and can be full of dangers for wildlife, but by doing what we can to make our city clean and healthy, we can take care of the animal neighbors we already have and make it welcoming for more. Now let's meet some of those little critters. This is Spud the Striped Skunk. Skunks can be found throughout Ohio and other Midwestern states. Right now she's putting mealworms out for Spud. Spud loves to eat bugs. In fact, skunks help control pests in our backyards by eating a lot of different bugs and insects. Right now Spud is rolling around a treat ball to get those mealworms out because skunks are also very smart. Skunks are what we call opportunistic eaters. That means even though they love bugs the best, they'll eat almost anything that they come across. They'll also eat garbage. That's not good for them. What do you think of when I say skunk? You probably think of something pretty smelly. The skunk's most famous defense is its musk, which it can spray at a distance of 15 feet with great accuracy. This is a skunk's last resort. They'll try to scare off predators before spraying them. Skunks don't have too many predators in the wild because a lot of animals don't want to get risk getting sprayed by a stinky skunk. Skunks may face many threats in the wild, but some of their biggest threats have to do with habitat fragmentation. That's when people build roads and separate out spaces in the wild, especially in forests. When forests are destroyed, a lot of skunks lose their habitat. And when roads are built, a lot of skunks end up getting hit by cars. This is my friend Twilight. Twilight is a black rat snake. Rat snakes like Twilight are native to Ohio, and that means you might be able to find them out in the wild near where you live. Now Twilight is 11 years old, and snakes can live for a pretty long time. Usually, when they're in human care, they can live a little bit longer because they face lots of threats out in the wild in their homes. Twilight has this beautiful black coloring with some lighter scales underneath. And this is great camouflage. When we talk about camouflage, we're talking about patterns or colors that help an animal to blend in. And something really special about rat snakes is they are great at climbing. Let's see if we can get Twilight to climb for us. So rat snakes like Twilight are great climbers. And out in the wild, you might find them up in trees. This is because some of their favorite foods live in trees. So they get their names from eating rodents like rats and mice, but they will also eat squirrels and even bird eggs. Some people are afraid of snakes, but snakes like Twilight can help us get rid of pesky mice and rats that might try and live around our homes. So it's great that we have snakes like Twilight. So Twilight is actually one of the silliest snakes that we have at the zoo. She sometimes likes to hang upside down and she will even sleep on her back, which is so silly. So one of the biggest threats that rat snakes face is habitat loss and fragmentation. When snakes like Twilight lose their habitats, they might have to find new places to live. And sometimes those places are in our own neighborhoods where things like cats and dogs and cars might hurt a snake. If you see a snake like Twilight or even another type of snake in your own backyard, you shouldn't be afraid because the snake is probably more afraid of you than you are of him. A good idea is to leave the snake alone and so he doesn't get hurt and neither do you. We want to make sure that we are keeping habitats clean and safe for our animal friends. I bet you wouldn't want to live in a house that was full of trash and neither does Twilight or any of our other snakes and our animal friends.
This is our eastern screech owl named Oakley. They are three years old. Eastern screech owls have keen eyesight, which is really helpful because they are strictly nocturnal. In the wild, they largely eat mice, shrews, and all types of insects. In spite of their small size, screech owls are exceptional hunters. An owl cannot move its eyes, it can only look straight ahead. Owls make up for this by being able to turn their head around 270 degrees. Two of the biggest threats to these owls are habitat loss and pest control. When people use pesticides to kill rodents, sometimes those pesticides can end up in the screech owls because they eat them. By creating more habitat, we're actually creating more pest control because these guys are really great at eating them. And it also reduces our need to use pesticides. Eastern screech owls are cavity nesters. This means that they find small holes in trees to hang out. Loss of habitat can affect this because it becomes harder for them to find these holes in old trees. If you want to make your neighborhood more welcoming for these eastern screech owls, you can directly help them by building an owl box for them to use as a cavity nest. This is Leonardo, our eastern box turtle. Leonardo is 35 years old. Wow, can you believe it? Box turtles and a lot of other turtles can live for a really long time in the wild, up to 50 years. Turtles and other tortoises can live for a long time because they have a great defense mechanism. They have a hard shell that protects them from predators that might want to eat them. Box turtles are omnivores. This means that they both eat other animals and fruits and vegetables. Box turtles stay in a pretty small area throughout their life. In fact, they can spend their entire life in an area the size of a football field. One of the biggest threats that turtles face is something called habitat fragmentation. Not only do turtles lose their habitat when trees come down and roads and houses are built, they also are in danger of getting hit by cars when they try to cross the road. If you see a box turtle in the wild, you can definitely look at him from afar and check out how cool he is but you shouldn't touch him or pick him up. If you move them around, they might get lost and unable to find their way home. You might see turtles on the side of the road. If there are no cars and you have a grown up with you, you can pick up the turtle and carry him across the road. You don't want to turn the turtle around in the opposite direction from where he was going because turtles can be very stubborn and they like to just turn around and keep going the direction they were going. This is an ordinary clay flower pot, but it can be used for other things too. You can turn a flower pot just like this into a toad abode. Now a toad abode is just a fancy name for a house that a toad might want to live in. So with a pot like this, you can put it on the ground in your garden and you can leave a little bit of space underneath so that a toad can crawl in there and it forms a nice shelter for that toad to stay nice and warm and safe from predators and safe from rain and things like that. You might even have a broken flower pot that has a little chip out of the rim and that can be a natural hole that the toad can go inside of so you don't have to throw your flower pots away. If you have an empty toilet paper roll or paper towel roll you can use it to help wildlife in your backyard or out in nature. You can actually take a paper towel or toilet paper roll and turn it into a bird feeder. All you need is some sun butter or peanut butter and bird seed. You take the toilet paper roll and you cover it in that butter and then you just roll it in some bird seed. You can just stick it on a branch if you want or you can also add some strings so that it hangs. This also helps ensure that birds are eating things that are good for them and not getting into garbage that might be laying around. So if you have any empty toilet paper or paper towel rolls, try turning it into a bird feeder to help out our feathered friends. Here at the zoo, we have a bat box. Now, bat boxes are special things that we can build to help out bats. 
A lot of people are afraid of bats, but they're really beneficial to have around. They come out at night and they eat lots of bugs, including those pesky mosquitoes. Now, bats, during the day, they like to sleep. And so they will often find uh, tree bark or even the eaves of your house to hide underneath during the day. And we don't want to share our homes with bats, so we want to make sure they have homes of their own. And we can build bat boxes that allow bats to sleep during the day in a safe place. Then they can come out at night and eat all the bugs. Mason bees are another really important native animal in Ohio that are great pollinators. This is something called a bee box. To be specific, it's a mason bee box because mason bees are the only types of bees who are going to use it, which is great because they're very friendly and not very aggressive bees. You can buy these kits online or make one yourself at home, and it's a great safe way to keep these important pollinators happy and healthy in their habitats and to keep them safe from predators. Bat boxes, toad abodes, mason bee houses, these are all ways that we can help wildlife in our own backyards. One of the missions of the Cincinnati Zoo is to build a better home for wildlife. And you can do this too in your own homes or around your neighborhoods. For more information on how you can help our wildlife friends, visit CincinnatiZoo.org, our website, where you can learn more.